ladies, gentlemen, hero scapers, and poke pals. Welcome to episode six of HeroScape Unboxing on Friday night. I'm MK Plus Ultra. This is Alex. And like I said, we just want to welcome you. This is our sixth episode of this. We're so happy to be here. We're so happy you're watching. If you've seen from episode one, thank you. You're a, you're a champion. You're a true champion. So the packs you see in front of you are the packs we're going to be giving away. We got the Icewind Scourge and the Heroes of Faron. So go to episode five, get the details on the giveaway, follow the instructions, and you could win yourself some brand new in-box Dungeons and Dragons crossover Heroscape merchandise. All right, so let's get in to what we're gonna be unboxing today. Like last time, we got a special bonus pack, and that is the D. That is the <laughs> D1 Glon Bog Riders. I can't wait to get into this because. Uh, I got. I actually have some green scales already that I got outside of the box, but I've been waiting to put them into an army until we unbox these. So now I'm gonna have two squads of green scales. I'm gonna be able to do some cool little things. Bonus pack plus Xanaphor's discovery. We have the whole wave. So we're gonna be unboxing it for you, and we just can't wait. And let's get into it. Let's go. Here's a closer look at the package. A little friend skis. Got the ice, the ice elemental. I'm pretty sure it's a greater ice elemental. And then you got the chain fighter in there. And then you also got the three green scales. Scaly boys. Let's look at the back. Nice. That's a nice back. All right, time to unboxing. Okay, so now we have the Dro Chain Fighter. He's a common hero, he's only 25 points. Attack of four, defense of four, chain grab, hide in darkness. He's actually a pretty interesting character to use. Um, yeah. Nice. And even close up, his features are really hard to make up. He's just make out. He's just so dark. Skin like onyx. For sure. Here we have the Dro Chain Fighters army card. All right, so next we have the Greater Ice Elemental. He's really cool. I like him. It's pretty good attack. He's 130 points, but attack of six, defense of four, cold healing, ice cold, and ice spikes. This guy is really frigid. Now for a closer look at the elemental, as if you needed a closer look. He was pretty much right in your face. Look at his ice hand. Nice. This guy. He's huge. Here is the Greater Ice Elemental. All right, so we have the Green Scale Warriors. I really like them. Their loyalty to the Lizard King and Lizard King bonding. Move of six, attack of two, defensive two, but they get buffed with their Lizard King and they just look so buff. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. This guy. These might be some of my favorite sculpts in the whole Dungeons and Dragons way for sure. But That's possibly in all of Heroescape. Yeah, these even. guys. These, yeah, they've got to be some of my favorite character models in this entire game. Like, so sick. With the, like, uh, a turtle shield? Like, it um, is a turtle it is. shield. I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. Um, this guy is like the runt of the litter, but he's still like, probably the, he's probably the quickest he's one. He's the most agile, the quickest. Look at him. And those eyes glowing red. 
Now the green scale warriors. Okay, and first up of Zamhor's discovery, we've got the lawmen and the samurai. Let's uh, let's get into this guy. It's looking pretty nice. We have the Tagawa Samurai with their Counter Strike and Bloodlust. There's some really cool figures defense of three, attack of three, but they can have a maximum attack of six if they play their cards right. Really cool squad, 120 points, unique squad, but still, they can do some damage. They've all got different armor, different. This guy swords. has no armor. No armor at all, exactly. He trusts himself that much. Now for the second guy. Wow. He is in full motion right now. That sword's coming down and it's coming down hard. Oh. oh wow, I didn't even see the back. What is that? A demon? It on looks the side? like it. It really does. That's crazy. Oh, and now we have the third one. It was a dual wielding the katanas. He might have the most armor on, maybe tied for most, but still, he is bald and beautiful. Full out offense, full out defense. This guy's got it all. Do not mess with this man. Now the Tagawa Samurai. All right, so now we have the Lawmen. And these guys aren't a squad. They're also just three unique characters. We've got Guilty McCreech, Dead Eye Dan, and James Murphy. And these guys are crazy. Um, I like their character models. They have some really cool attacks. Now for a closer look at Dead Eye Dan, he has his sharp shooting gun and his hat covering his face. Now we have James Murphy with his... With his whip and his shotgun blast special attack. So that is a shotgun and that is a whip. And he's ready to take your life from you. Now for baby boy Guilty McCreech. He has that double attack with two attack and seven range. He's really nice. With that seven range you can get on height so it can easily be two attacks of three. And he's just ready to shoot him up. Now, did I Dan? Now, Mr. James Murphy. Now we got Guilty McCreech. All right, guys. Next pack. Those cowboys. How awesome were they? Super. But cool. now on to the elves and soulborgs. We already have some gladiatrons. We are rolling. We already have some Gladiatrons, and those armies that the Gladiatrons have been in, they've been um, pretty good. So I've decided that after we unbox these, the Gladiatrons are going to become an official army in our rotation of six. So here we got the Gladiatrons and the Elves. Get a good look inside that box, nice and crisp. Looks really cool on camera right now. Really nice. Four Gladiatrons, three Elves. And now look at the back. See the Gladiatrons and the Elves. All right, time to unbox. So we have the Aubrian Archers. Frenzy is a pretty dope attack. Uh, once you take a turn with them, you get to roll your die again. And if you get a 16 or higher, I think it is, you get to yeah. take another turn just with, with the three of them. Just like Super the Venom cool. Vipers. Yep. Here's the first Aubrian Archer. Ooh. And the, I was going to say, they look like elves, and they are elves. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Here we got the second character model. Nice. He just loosed an arrow. 
There's the last Alfred and Archer. I really like their character models. It's really sick. He has a quiver full of arrows that's ready to be unleashed. So here we have the Aubrey and Archers. Now we have the Gladiatrons. And they have a movement bonding with the Blastatrons that we did just unbox last week. But we've already played some games with them. We've got some in the mail before we unbox this, just like we did with the just like we did with the knights and actually the green scales too. But the army that they're in is sick. So when we add this squad to the already awesome army, it's yep. going to be that much better. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so now here's the first Gladiatron with his Cyber Claw. And you're going to notice that actually all of these Gladiatrons, one of their arms is a Cyber Claw. Now we have the second Gladiatron with his little, little baby Cyber Claw. <laughs> it's like beep beep. Cyber Claw. Clack bamp. Now we have this model and he is Stab First Cyber Claw later. Look at him. But he does indeed have that cyber claw. And now for the last one. He does have the most pronounced cyber claw. And he does have an axe. None of the other guys have axes. They all got swords. This guy got the cyber claw and the axe. Here we have the gladiatrons. And up next, you've got the Greeks and the Vipers. Or is it the Vipers and the Greeks? It's the Greeks and the Vipers. I had to correct. Let's show it off first before we get into it. Actually, let's see these cool Viper guys up here. And the Sacred Band. Look at those guys. Those shows are so sick. Oh my god. Those perfectly round. Let's get into it. so they can bond with the um, Venok Warlord. And they also have Slither, just like all of their slithering brethren. Move 7, attack of 3, defense of 3. They're really nice for just a 65-point squad. They're, I'll, I'll do it. Now we got the first Armok Viper. Really nice. Nice. Now we have Sculpt number 2. This guy, he's really like... <laughs> and now for the leader. He is definitely like, come at me, bro. <laughs> There's so many character models that are like, come at me, bro. But he is definitely... Oh, look at his face. How does his face look like that? It seems so like... <laughs> That's so awkward looking, but it's really cool. And now the Armog Vipers. Now we have the Sacred Band, and they're cool. I like them, but I honestly like the Roman Legionnaires better. Um, but yeah, I like their little shields, little round shields, that's cool. They're, the snake they're, insignia on them. And their skirts are pretty cool too. Yeah, cool skirts, bro. Okay, so here's the first Sacred Band member. His fist looks, um really disproportionate like his his fist is as big as Zed <laughs> but they, yeah they just groomed different back then he's huge this guy okay now we have the one hiding behind his shield ready to slice back Papa man. ooh now we got that one pointing at you there's always that one there's always that come at me bro and there's always that one like ready to stab me stab me Ready to stabby stabby. This one is the come at me, bro. Look at him. This one's like, hey, bruh. I don't I'm even need open. my shield. I'm all the way open. I dare you to shoot me in the heart with the arrow. Now the Sacred Bands Army card. All right. Sadly, we're on to the last pack yet again. But don't be sad. Even though I said sadly. <laughs> Because next week, 
we got the flag bearers, all five of them. So be sure to watch next week's episode to get all the flag bearer dice rolling dice bag goodness. And then the week after that, we got something special planned. So stay tuned. Announcements next week. But yeah, special. We got something special planned after the flag bearers. But then after the something special plan, we got something even more special. And it's the season finale, guys. All right, so let's get a closer look at this pack. It is a unique heroes pack. Ooh, Valgard in there. That guy at the bottom. His name is Parminio. Parmigiano Reggiano. But yeah, let's get into it. All right, time to unbox. Okay, he's a pretty cool warlord. Um, I would take other warlords before him. He is kind of suffering from that Scottie Pippen syndrome. You got Michael Jordan, so why would you go in and choose Scottie Pippen like um, willingly? You want that Michael Jordan, and his Michael Jordan is definitely Marcus, Marcus Decimus, and also he will definitely get picked after. Mebuduksa, like, there's no reason I would choose him over Mebuduksa. That's what still needs but the... But, still, yeah, yeah. He, he bonds with the sacred band, so let's, let's uh, see how that goes. Now for a closer look at Parmigiano. Look at him. He, he looks cool. I don't like his hair. His hair is kind of ridiculous. But I like the cape. He, he reminds me of, uh, Wow, he of uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character on uh, oh, like literally the ew. B team, literally the B team. That, not even the tra though. not even, not even the oh, trash gladiator who's name? here for the looks. Look at him with his fancy flowing cape and his nice hair, yeah. his cool looking sword that he probably Marcus just really took. puts in the work. Literally, and this is yes, definitely, um, yes, Commodus. Commodus. This guy is Commodus. For sure. Look at him. With his fancy hair. He his is, fancy all cape. show. He and does. He, like, if you put him right next to Marcus, he would do that, he would fall. <laughs> he would die. <laughs> <laughs> We're spending way too much time on Parminio, but. Parminio and his perm. Perm. Minio. Perminio. It's Perminio. Oh, look at this Perminio. <laughs> wow. Parminio's army card. Alright, so now we have the fattest Gladiatron. <laughs> Mr. All for Show himself. Major X-17. Like, why? <laughs> no, closer look at Major X-17. Improved Cyber Claw. What even kind of sword is that? What is that? It's more like a paddle than a sword. It is. It looks like a paddle. It looks like a cricket bat. It looks like a small <laughs> cricket bat, this you man's got the guy. Cyber Claw and the cricket bat. <laughs> Why is this? Why is this just turned into a roast session of our figures? I love it. <laughs> Major X-17's army card. So here we got Moore's Bane. I wish we had less Bane. But yeah, this guy is... He's okay, I guess. He has the Rod of Negation. And yeah. Now let's get a closer look at Moore's Bane. This guy, he's looking, his character model is pretty cool, but I don't know if I would use him. Uh, he is an elf. He's an elf wizard. Mm. So, actually, that could mesh well with some other elf whiz. I don't like that. <laughs> just meshing with some elf whiz over here. <laughs> don't mind me. Sounds like a little alchemy. Some, <laughs> meshing with some elf whiz. <laughs> Here's Moore's Bane's army card. Now we 
now we have Medusa. I mean, Sudima. Um, she has Stare of Stone, and she can stone up a character if she stares at them, just like Medusa. And she has Life of Four, Attack of Two, Defense of Three. She's 140 points. Ah, oh, she's kind of garbage for 140 points. Uh, or Sudema, however you want to pronounce it. She is a mummy. She is undead. That sword, she looks like she's not cool enough to own that sword. Like, that sword definitely needs to be with another hero. Like, it was, yeah. What if Cayman had that sword? Like, that would be sick. I want to actually take it out of her hand. And why does she only have the one leg? Like, what's up with the it other leg? That's the thing. She has got two legs. She got two legs, but she's, like, crisscross. See? Oh. Yeah. And that's just her. The hilt of her yes. sword. Why does she got two swords? Or the sheath of her sword? No, but there's Why a is, there's a handle there's in a there sword somewhere. In there, there's a sword in there. And then she got another cool sword. See, she don't even need that sword in her hand. She does. She definitely needs to give that up. Weak. Sudima's army card. Okay, now on to possibly my favorite sculpt slash character of this unboxing is Valgard. And so he has first Assault 3 and Berserker Charge Enhancement. He's 110 points. He's a Warlord. 7 life, 2 attack, 4 defense. He's looking pretty solid. And what is this arm he has? Can anybody tell me? Is this, is this a dragon arm? What's he got going here? That... It's That's got scales. Crazy. It looks like a claw. Those don't look like fingers. It look like looks like a claw. There's only four, also. Yeah, this guy. He's doing something weird, and I don't know if I like it or if I really like it. And finally, Valgard's army card. Alright guys, so we finished up the unboxing, and now it's time for army updates and battle reports. Okay, so for updates, this is pretty much the only army that has been updated or the only update to the armies. I did swap out the ranged squad with the 4th mass and the 10th regiment. I'm going to split those up and put them somewhere else. But for now, I have the gladiatrons taking the place of that squad. So in this army, there's three gladiatron squads, two blastatron squads, the Krav Maga agents, and Thoracus. I really like this team. It's actually 2-0 and o right now. It beat Q9, and it also beat the Roman squad. Yeah, I really can't wait to see what this one does in the future. Um, it can be optimized a little bit more by adding some more gladiatrons, but we'll see. Okay, here's the experimental Nilfheim Greenscales army. And it has Marku and Raylin and some Wormlings. Like I said, it's experimental. This is a tiny squad compared to some of the other ones that have 16 common figures in it. But it's doing okay. It's, um, it, well, in the one match that it did, it performed okay. I think the only reason I was able to pull out that win was because I was playing against an inexperienced player, my fiance. But I really like it. I need another squad of green scales, but... It is our alternate army. Whenever me and Alex are rolling the die to choose our teams, um, depending on whatever you know number we roll, that corresponds with what team we get. If we don't necessarily want to play the team or don't like the team, we have the option of using one of the alternates. And before the alternate was the Gladiatrons build, before we got that extra squad of Gladiatrons. But now this army right here is the alternate army. And you're only allowed to switch out the army that you rolled for once in, you know, the session of battles that we do. So once you use the alternate team, you're stuck with whatever you roll. But it's just nice to have the alternate team in case, you know, you want to switch things up. So last time, if I'm not mistaken, this squad was 2 and 0. And now it is 3 and 1. It did get another win against the Orcs. But also they did lose while I was piloting them 
against my brother while he was playing the Romans. The Romans just outmaneuvered them with their five move because they had Marcus as to their four. And I just couldn't get around the map as fast. He had Raylan. So I put a couple hits on Raylan, a couple wounds, and then she flew away and grabbed the healing glyph that was on the board. And that was a huge turning point in the match. I basically wasted the order markers trying to get her dead. And she just flew away and healed. So even though they lost that battle, they could have easily won. It could have easily gone the other way. So yeah, they're three and one, but they're still super solid. Okay, so here's the Roman squad. Like I just talked about, it did beat the Knights. Those airborne dropping were just nasty. My brother dropped them and then he placed them right next to Marcus. So they were able to pick off quite a few Knights. Um, no updates to this army. They just had a couple battles. I do believe they are sitting at three and two. My fiance did lose to me with this squad. I was using an experimental Nofheim green scales army that I built. It was really cool. I'm pretty sure the only reason I won with that green scale army was because I was playing my fiance who is an inexperienced player, but it was a fun match. She really liked the warlord bonding. She was getting the hang of the game mechanics. So that made me happy. And it was just a fun match because no fine green scales is actually pretty fun to use. Okay, so now we have Torku, Na, and the Maro. So there's one more squad of the Dividers and three more squads of the Nagrubs. But this army finally got a win with their revenge against Q9. They are currently sitting at one and three. They're pretty fun to use. I love Torkoal Na's stomp. He stomped out so many rats again this time. And I didn't even have to use the dividers. The dividers stayed in the start zone. And I pretty much smashed Q9. I ended up one-shotting both Q9 and Cayman. I moved to a position where I got height on Q9 with Torkoal Na. Don't ask me how that happened. Um, I rolled seven die. Six skulls were rolled. Alex rolled defense. He had a defense of seven. He only rolled two shields. I one shot at a Q9. In the next turn, I ran over to Cayman and he was on height. So it was a five on six. And then so I rolled six dice and five of them came up skulls. Alex rolled his five defense and only one came up a shield. So I one shot at him right after I one shot at Q9 and Alex basically gave up the game at that point. It was late game. I had already killed off Raylan. I had stomped so many rats that it was, he couldn't recover. So finally this one did squeak out a win and it's one in three and I, I, I like it. It's a fun army. Okay, so now we have the Q9 Raylan build and there are two more squads of rats. This squad is currently two and two. It lost to the Morrow, it beat the Morrow and then it lost to the Gladiatrons and then beat the Gladiatrons. So it is two and two, um, and I really like this army. I really like the composition and I can't wait to use it more. And so now we have the Orc army. There is three more squads of heavy gruts. Not much to say about this army. They are a great army. I love using them. They're 0 and three because they've faced the Knights three times. I was so close to beating them, but unfortunately I couldn't pull out the win. I'm going to pull out the win. They've just had a bad matchup with the Knights every single time, but once they get going, they'll get going. All right, battle reports done, army updates out of the way. I do wanna say, give away those packs that you saw earlier. You gotta go to episode five, Follow the instructions on episode 5 and you will be entered to win some brand new inbox Hero Skate merchandise. Episode 5, Thor's Vengeance. That's the wave that we unboxed. So go back to that video and you got yourself an entry. Now we're at that part of the video. We're wrapping it up. I'm going to say my favorite units. Alex is going to say his favorite units. And then um, I'm going to do my end tagline. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so our favorite squad in common uh, was the Greenscale Warriors. We can't wait to put them into an army. 
maybe with a Nilfheim as their lizard king. But yeah, they're really awesome. I like their I like their character design just as much as like yeah. their actual character, but like their model, their sculpt is like it's really yeah. cool. Alex's favorite unique hero. Yeah, my favorite was uh, Dirty Dead Eye Dan over here with his range of ten. Like that's just ridiculous. I don't know any ranged character who's got that much range. Plus, yeah. he's got a couple cool special abilities too. Like he's he's a pretty cool guy. I, I definitely liked him the most. My favorite unique hero was Valgard. I liked his special abilities. I like that you can get up to five attack sometimes, but seven life. He's a really good hero, and he's a warlord, so he can bond with those Romans. All right, guys. Like always, what we do in life echoes in eternity. <laughs> <laughs>